I do. Jay McCullough reporting live. I'm here with Wei Sang. We are Howdy. exploring more of the number 11 food store menu. Wei hasn't had this before. I have not. Um, had to go back, had to share some, some new Amaro with uh, the chef there, uh, but more to that. And while we were at number 11 food store, uh, Wei was nostalgically glancing at Hoboken Burrito, which used to be Mission Burrito. They've since moved up to uh, Palisade Ave um, after dancing around Hoboken for a while. But th this was the original location that was sold to someone else. We don't know who's actually running it, but turnkey operation. And they had the combination platter there, which we had to get. So we're gonna get to that first, actually. Well, should we start with the Mission Burrito? Sure. Now you first had this, uh, what year would you say? 2001. 2001, 2001. Were you, did you find it yourself? Or did Jason Murrin introduce that to you? Oh, I, I don't remember if it was me or Jay. But um, you, 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 you did say you trudged discovery. in the snow to get it. Yes, you said I you slushed over ice and snow. from 901 Castle Point Terrace, or from, from Davis Hall, maybe. No, no, 903, 903. 903 Castle Point Terrace, that's yeah. right. Uh, this is some leftover yesterday of their best fried rice ever. I, I'm not, I don't want to, we'll get to that later. That's a whole different story. <laughs> let's just, yeah. Yeah, let's focus on the Mission Burrito. Mame, so, Mame. Mame is eating her dinner right now, but this is what you're getting for 17 bucks. They, they did raise the prices a little bit. You're getting two platters of food here. Mame. And one of them is just the rice salad and beans. Yes, we have. If I recall correctly, this used to cost fourteen dollars back. Fourteen dollars. That's right. Yes, and their single burritos, which were a little bit bigger, were maybe about thirteen. So it seemed yeah, like quite a deal. Yeah. Easily two meals with this. Yeah. It was um, two meals. So I'm just going to grab a knife here, and if I take enough silverware out of this mug that's holding up the tripod, the camera will tip over. So we'll try not to do that. <laughs> uh, so let's just stack up these. We'll get to these in a second. Uh, KK, feel free to have if one of these boxes has the bow in it. Uh, so we're just going to cut up. That is not for Meme. This is for Baba and Wei. Amazingly, and the presentation is still the same. It is the same presentation. I want to say this burrito looks is, is a hair smaller. It is. Hopefully there's no hair in it. Uh, um, so this is the shredded chicken. They gave me the choice of beef or shredded chicken. We got shredded chicken in here. Uh, so just give you some of that. Put another piece off for myself. And what I think is uh, hopefully the sauce. I remember the sauce being excellent here. Um, so I'm just going to do a drab. Maybe yeah, this, this may, you can decide for yourself if that's the same sauce. I'll just leave it there for you. Um, and let me just grab a spoon. This is like playing Jenga here. Oh, they're um, missing sour cream. There is. Oh, interesting. But don't worry. Op delivers. We've got sour cream. Oh, ow. Oh, careful there. The sour cream is integral to this dish. It is integral to this. Thank you for pointing that out. I would have totally forgotten. Uh, yeah, we do have some sour cream left over from the Takis episode. Oops. Um, so just give you a dollop there. This is still pretty fresh. Quite an oversight to not include the sour cream. Indeed. Is that too much sour cream? I'll no, take some. That's, that's good. That's a good amount. Okay. You want sour cream? Maybe later. I don't know. Um, you're, you're already eating. You're, you're totally fine here. Some hay dough for you. Some rice. And uh, I'll just leave this out there. There's some jalapenos. Not a lot, though. You're just getting two. So... Let's get some of these as well. Uh, we'll cut into the enchilada here. We did come right home, but maybe this maybe this needed to be heated up a little bit more. Uh, feel free to give Emma whatever she needs. Um, she would like some taco, maybe. Taco, cheese, beans, some sour cream. She does like her beans from Rumba's Cafe. Okay, and then uh, this is just going to be a mess here, but um, but it it shouldn't matter in terms of tasting. And let me just give you a fork. And uh, now it's just mostly the chopsticks holding up the camera. So we'll see what goes on there. <laughs> I will say we're being civil here and sharing this dish, but uh, yes. one of the great joys of eating this uh, in the past for me was just kind of digging in into like way, way too much food, way too much food. And then did you ever polish it off entirely or did oh, you- Oh yeah, like... definitely. <laughs> oh, in one night? Oh, yes, one, oh, one okay. night, one person made, yeah. Um, not exactly the healthiest thing, but it, it's mm. around finals time. It's quite a comfort. Mm. I think the one problem here is the sour cream needs to be a little warm because usually it would be traveling in the same container, but. Yeah. The rice is as I remember, I mean, I guess we'd really have to do a shootout with the current Mission Burrito with this menu and stack them, <laughs> see how they do side by side. Um, I think we're a little, a little lacking maybe on the chicken in this burrito. So there's definitely some shredded chicken in there, but it's not, it's not a lot. And uh, I actually didn't get some of the, um, the enchilada there, so let me, there's, there's quite a generous portion of chicken in enchilada. This is definitely drier though than I would say the Mission Burrito actually is, if you get it in the in the heights. 
Uh, briefly, they were at Park and Sixth when that was briefly a bodega before it turned into Alessio's. Between, uh, if anyone remembers the actual old Park and Sixth restaurant, did you ever get a chance to have that? No. But we did go to Dullboy, where you took that picture of me as the white under the white trash. Oh logo. yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was the same owners. <laughs> um, so I, I would say the chicken isn't necessarily like dry. It just is chicken. Chicken tends to be dry. I'm thinking like yeah. the the rice and the. Uh, if you're getting this from actual Mission Burrito, mm -hmm. it's a much more like the ingredients are here, but they're not in bed with each other. Just I, I don't know if to use the right term, but they're they're not commingling as as they would otherwise. Right. Um, it's like there is more than some of its parts, is what I'm saying. And that this is this is really just it's a collection thing. of food. <laughs> yeah, this is a collection of food. Undeniable. This is a collection yeah. of food here. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna put this aside and uh, feel free to continue walking down memory lane. I want to dive into some of the new items at Number Eleven Food Store here, so we have a double header for you. And um, let's put this off to the side. Okay, so we've got the drunken noodles on standby. I wanted this is KK and Way's first experience here, so I wanted to get. Oh, right off the bat, I can tell you, they're doing a much better job of getting these, getting that sauce distributed with the noodle. That was one of my early critiques. And uh, I'm just going to use the other side of the plate here. Uh, we also got two of the OG Bao. Um, but this is the blistered asparagus. We actually had this last night and it was great. I wanted to share that with you guys. So I'm gonna take one of these, just use the gong kwai here. Uh, so this is blistered asparagus. It's got some um, some onion. These are not spicy. So these are these are good for Emma to have. If you would like a blistered asparagus, my dear, here you go. Let me just cut that up for you. And we also have, uh, this is the OG bao. I guess maybe they're a hair smaller. So now you're getting two for nine. Uh, whereas previously it looks like I just lost the pork belly there. Um, or is this a bonus pork belly? Oh, maybe that's a bonus pork belly. I'll just put that back. Uh, and then this is another, um, this is the, oh, the fried calamari with a gochujang, some sesame seeds, and um, let's see what else is in here. Oh, honey as well. So it's maybe kind of a take on uh, like a hot honey kind of a dish there. So I'll just leave that out. And this is going to be another OG bell. I'll just leave that off to the side. Uh, so right off the bat, let me just go for the calamari. Uh, probably should have had this immediately as soon as it came out of the restaurant, but... Oh, my mistake. I should not be eating with the gong kwai. Okay, uh, calamari uh, probably would have been crispier. It traveled, the flavor is there. Good piece of calamari, not too chewy. Um, this past weekend, we went over to what? Soup Dumpling Plus. Mm -hmm. Had some tripe, had a conversation. I, I enjoy tripe. I have a two-chew rule on tripe. So like book tripes can't do shredded uh, honeycomb tripe like with beef tendon, uh, that's usually very doable for me, but like uh, the, ch the chewy stuff, I just can't do. Do you ever prefer the preparation style? Like, would you be okay with menudo and soup? What would, uh, so tripe and soup is difficult because sometimes it stays too thick. And mm -hmm. I feel like some Italian soups have tripe and I, I, I'm not a fan of that. Mm. I, mean, I, I, I know I didn't grow up with this. I talked about this in a previous episode, but it's, um, I feel like the the um, textures are difficult to break into some cuisines because some cultures really enjoy like that. I don't know. Would you say <clears throat> tripe is QQ? No. No. Um, it depends. Um, I think in a menudo or or in like a uh, uh, in a Colombian. What soup. is a menudo for our uninformed guests and as well as myself? I don't want to admit. It's but like I, a, a Mexican tripe dish, right? Um, okay, a Mexican tripe dish. Okay. And uh, there's a Colombian version that's like a much more of like a stew. Mm -hmm. And um, it's called Soba de Monongo. Okay. And this is accessible up in North Bergen? Yeah, you can go to um, the, the Noches restaurants uh, over by uh, Kennedy uh, Tunnel. They're off even in Montclair now. They're, they're really branching out. Yeah, but not all of them at the same menu, right? No. Oh. All of them are going to have um, the uh, basic platters. The basic, uh, the, uh, the paisa, but they have paisa, mm -hmm. right? It's, uh, it's just going to be the thing. If That's the main trick. It demands it. Okay. Oh, that's that's uh, the the chicharron with like the steak, the egg. Oh, that main platter. Sausage, okay, yeah, main platter. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, but you're saying not every no chase. But not every place is going to have a tripe soup. Okay. And in my mind, that's a damn shame because like that that thing's just like a really comforting. Uh, so soup. your no chase, if I'm thinking, is the one by the White Castle in the park. My no that's chase. North. That's your neither no. of them are mine, but like okay, but the, the one closest one to yeah, me, the one um, that you've first taken me to. There's that's two what I'm that are very close to, to me. There's one that's by the park, and there's one by the tunnel way out here. Now, would you say the no chase? Oh, okay, I was going to say almost the no chase with the worst parking has the better food. But even the one on Tunnel Ave is excellent. They have a big parking lot, that's, so that doesn't hold. Uh, but one, seating is difficult there. Montclair has a lot of room. Yeah, yeah. And they're probably yeah. just serving the hits there. They don't <laughs> have the authentic stuff. Milo smells something. I don't know. 
Um, so, oh, so that soup is, is, what is the tripe consistency in that soup? So the tripe consistency is going to be more like, this is, sounds, sounds kind of like not so great, but it's kind of jellied. So it's kind okay. of, it just breaks apart in your mouth. Okay. But part of that is the richness of the stew. Because like you're, you're having potato, you're having mm -hmm. um, chunks of meat, and you're having you know, chunks of tripe. And it just kind of like all gels together. I think maybe like you're, like you're saying, cultures that grew up with different uh, mouthfeel mm -hmm. as integral parts of their cuisine will really mm -hmm. enjoy that. See, Milo did not grow up with tripe. He has no idea what you're talking about, but he's so allured by this prospect. Um, but from coming from Cantonese cuisine, you're, you identify like that it fits right in. It's definitely like uh, something that appeals to, to someone of my background. Uh, mm -hmm. Similarly to like how um, a lot of Jewish folks enjoy uh, eating Cantonese cuisine because uh, the cuisine tends to kind of be on the blander side, on the milder side. Mm -hmm. um, like or less spicy. We, we, we all have like a commonality. Like that's our touchstone, our Rosetta Stone that, that we kind of like all sync up on. So mm -hmm. like definitely. Um, when, when we have when we have the chicharron, when we have sopa de marnogo, it's it's something that like uh, immediately I'm drawn to. Mm. So it's like yeah, that's great. The uh, can I interest you in some of the drunken noodles? These are a yeah, bit sure. spicy today. Uh, Cynthia just got out of the shower. Make sure you get a shrimp there. How was that? Was that a good shower? It was. I was singing. I mean, I was humming. Singing in the shower. We're kind of going out of school. Mama Shibabo the shenga. <laughs> Uh, and then feel free to have one of these. I'll give you a, this is an asparagus and some of the calamari as well, some cilantro and, uh, feel free to, I'm not going to force you to bite into this now, but the, um, the, the OG bao, I, I, I think it might've been a slightly different rendition when it was one for seven versus two for nine, but it's still quite tasty if you'd like a bite. Oh yeah, I'll have a bite. Wait, I didn't get a plate? I know I'm leaving, but I don't get a plate? Those who make alternative dinner plans with their friends customarily... Come on, come on. Okay, I I'll stop being a dick. Here, here have this. She um, Do they have a wok set up over there? They do have a wok set up. They got deep fryers going. Um, one of the menu items that was briefly there was their Ma Pao chili oh. cheese to open. Oh, the drunken noodles are good. The drunken yeah. noodles a big improvement today. Mm -hmm. And so I just want like... This just, does have the wok, hey? Just but look at the noodles. I mean... Uh, one of my earlier complaints was that they really weren't, th these are thoroughly coated. So I think I want to, like to their credit, they've really paid attention to some of my earlier feedback. Uh, or they've just decided this on their own. I'm not going to place any importance on the unsolicited oh, Facebook good. advice that I give them. The OG bao today? Yeah. I, I mean, the pickle plays well. Uh, the mala, mala fried chicken bao, I felt was going for like a Nashville hot style chicken sandwich. And that didn't really uh, gel together the same way. But again, both of these are light years ahead of the, I think the fried fish bao which was on the menu one day. I don't know if they brought that back. That needs more work to really come back. Mm -hmm. So does the calamari. Yeah, but the OG is definitely, uh, well, the calamari to its credit has been sitting in a box for about 25 minutes. Um, so we were uh, theorizing like maybe it was a lot fresher if we had had it immediately. Mm. Um, well, what, are your, what are your takes on the noodles? Not bad. Um. There's a good ingredient distribution. Uh, one of the other things we noticed, like the box size varies from day to day. So some days you're gonna order the same dish and get a lot more quantity. That's happened with the pepperoni fried rice before. I don't know, uh, but Emma's enjoying um, her food, her portions as well. Uh, any any thoughts for the camera? Uh, she would like more water. So we're just gonna give her some water and perhaps some fried rice. No, she's, we, had, a, she's had enough. She's had enough. Uh, so with that note, um, any immediate takeaways from the, uh, the calamari way? I'm not sure. Like, um, it's very good. Oh, excuse me. I'm so um, sorry. Would you call this a fusion food, or what is it trying to be? I mean, they, they run Italian restaurants and a pizza place. Oh, this is, I surmise it as, I wouldn't even say it's Italian guys making pizza, because, I mean, the shop owners are Italian, but the, the, the cook is, as far as I know, not Italian. But they're, they're definitely not holding back. And it, like, if any ingredient is good and appeals to them, they'll throw it in a dish. Yeah. Okay. Right, so the, the ma pao chili, chi the hot dog, the pepperoni fried rice, they're using good pepperoni there. I think these are the gong kwai, actually, if you would like to subscribe to the rules of the table. It feels like the calamari is seasoned in a very, like, uh, Cantonese way. Like, it tastes almost Do you like think that's the gochujang? Or, no, or you're talking about before the garlic, they even put the sauce? The, the, the garlic the, part of it. Like, you know, when you think of a calamari, right, it's usually the salt and pepper and 
and fried in a batter. Yes, yes. Uh, this is much more... Um, the seasoning has this particular character to it. Mm -hmm. That just kind of reminds me of like a, like a hard gals, you might. Okay. I, I, like what was that? Uh, like a hard, um, like a shumai dim sum, right? Shumai. Oh, shumai dim sum. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like that kind of seasoning. That kind of seasoning. Oh, okay, yeah. interesting. Yeah. I don't know if this makes sense. I mean, I wish I could have had this. I, I might have to order this again fresh. Um, <laughs> Look, I mean, as we often do, because we, we eat these things at all hours of the day, <laughs> and we're not always getting... But is it consistent? Huh? Like, this is a problem that they've had. I, this, could be, this could be a consistent... I mean, I've only had this dish once, so I can't say, but the, um, some of the dishes have definitely... Like, the drunken noodles have been a hand-over-hand mm -hmm. hand improvement from the first time we ordered these. So I think... I mean, they're new, to their credit. It's been, like, about a month and a half. Um, they're still shuffling things in and out of the menu. You go on a different day, you'll see some dishes are there, some are not. Uh, so I'm definitely watching changes happen as they as they decide what they want to change. Um, is this a is this food like is this dish this restaurant good quality like good value good quality? Good and I think that also depends on the dish that you're getting. Um, so I mentioned the the best fried rice ever, uh, same portion as the pepperoni fried rice, and I'm not convinced that the that the CP value is there the same way that it is with like the OG bow where you're getting two of these bow for nine bucks. Um, I have one piece of calamari if you want to like try it out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, it's. I don't know. Yeah, like. I think we didn't do this credit by not having it fresh, um, so that we probably squandered the entire episode. <laughs> uh, but it was worth it for the nostalgia that is Mission Burrito, and we'll try and get the actual Mission Burrito up here on a future episode. But it's nice to know this is still in town. You know, it's the original location. It's nostalgic. Um. You're not gonna like fill yourself up on this number eleven. Like this is great. Like it's good food, but like if you're hungry, the one mission burrito, burrito platter, Th and then you'll in. that'll do you in. So that and that's a takeaway from from Wei Sang here. Um, thanks for feedback. Always great to have you around. Hey, and uh, my pleasure. can't wait to get back up to Soup Dumpling Plus in Fort Lee. <laughs> Fabulous stuff going on there. You wouldn't believe it if I told you about it. So we'll just have to get that on video. Uh, but thanks very much. Have a great evening, everyone, and uh, and cheers. Any any parting words? Take care. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>